Hey guys, I'm Sean Hammond with Premier Guitar. We are at Winter Nam 2018 in Anaheim, talking to Jeff from the Boss booth. And Jeff, you guys have a new GT1000 here, right? You want to tell us about it? Yes, yeah, so this is GT1000. It's our newest effects processor. We're super, super excited about it. One, because it starts off with just having an incredible sound set in it, um, starting with the sounds from the uh, 500 series, like the DD500, RV500, and MD500. Two, it takes the uh, the A to D conversion that we had on those, right? So it now has 32-bit A to D, D to A, 96 kilohertz, super high fidelity, brand new chip, right? I'm working really high with these algorithms. But if you can have that, let's take it, kick it up a notch and go somewhere where nobody's gone yet. And that's with AIRD, which stands for Augmented Impulse Response Dynamics. We hear people talk about IRs all the time, right? But IRs are really only part of the story. Um, amplifiers, they really respond backwards and forward. In other words, IRs are kind of like an EQ that uh, the signal passes through. But in reality, a tube amplifier, the, uh, the uh, cabinet sound uh, changes the impedance and loading. There's distortion that happens in the transformer, things that feed back into the amplifier, which, you know, it's a whole, you know, effect on everything. Rabbit hole? Oh, yeah, it's a rabbit hole because this, you know, this thing affects this, affects this, affects this, and then that goes backwards. And it's just, right. it's, you know, people think of it like dominoes, like one step, two step, three step, four step. But really, it's like a big bowl of water and slime sloshing around and going back round and forth. And that's where a lot of the, those harmonics come from, a lot of the character comes from, a lot of things you're getting. Like when if I just chunk on the sound, which is just like a straight, you know, typical classic you know, EL84 type sound. <laughs> You can feel that it's kind of pushing your chest a little bit, even through that t tiny monitor right there. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool about Aired is that it is the first product to really try and incorporate that e experience, right, a far and beyond just a simple IR, but actually get the feel that the guitar player wants. And the great thing is, is that there's a lot of inputs and outputs on it, so you can get that feel, um, you know, with the, the sounds that's in there, uh, um, both uh, out the unit to like a, a live amplifier, or to uh, through the XLRs to to a PA system, right? So it can work in the studio. It works really well on stage, right? Because on stage, um, if you talk to a lot of sound engineers, you'll find that some are actually splitting the signal off and running their own sound for the guitar players while the guitar player might have something on stage. So guitar player on stage, a little too much gain, a little too much bass, you know, a little much too much delay, but in the house they don't want that, so they've been running something separate. Here you can do it from the same unit. It'll run two uh, amp tones at the same time. It runs four parallel paths, which can be routed in different, uh, pretty much any combination you can think of, and you can route them out to any of the outputs the way you want. So I can send something to my live amp here, something out to the house there, and have it however I'm, I'm going to use it. Additionally, this thing, because the air technology is really trying to work with the dynamics of amplifiers, whether they be inside the unit or if it's trying to connect with one. So, for example, you'll go to the output selection and you'll choose, you know, uh, stack, you know, uh, effects return, for example. That's going to be, excuse me, that's going to give you the uh, dynamics of that is going to be known to the product and it's going to calculate and work for the both of those. So with IRs, impulse responses, a lot of people are familiar with that through things like reverbs that mimic a specific environment or delays or whatever, but you're talking about a lot of that here is in an effort to make cabinet simulation more three-dimensional and nuanced. Absolutely. Uh, IRs and realistic. And realistic. Cause as as the state of the art is, has been up till now, has been IRs are something people capture and they use, but they're only capturing what basically, you know, when you capture an IR, you get all kinds of information. But the process for repeating that information erases all that information. The simplest second order harmonic, which should uh, any speaker does nat natively, gets erased, right? So the only thing you get when, with an IR at the end of the day is essentially a frequency response and time, right? You get some resonance and time, which is why they're really good for reverbs, as you, as you mentioned. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna take that, that impedance, like the natural spring effect of the, of, the, of the speaker, and send it backwards 
into the, the, uh, the amplifier tone, which changes its characteristics, its tone, its distortion, and everything going back this way. In fact, it goes so, so far back that it, when it pushes back against that, it's going to affect the power amp section, which when the power amp effect section is affected, what's it do? It starts robbing from the B plus voltage, which robs from the preamp. So the, really, the last thing in the chain can screw up the first thing in the chain and vice versa. And that is where the this, this dynamics, that squish and that feel, that that thing that we're always turning our amps up way too loud for, right? That's that's going to be there in, in the studio or live or wherever you're playing. Cool. Well, can we hear some of the other sounds? I know you guys have another appointment in a minute, and so do you want to just show us some other sounds? Sure. Let's, uh, let's just kind of pull up something here. Uh, let's go a little bit more. Because it is such a massive, ugly, cool effects processor, right, uh, with a right, multiple routing, let's give you something that has a little bit of effects on here. Um, here. I also love the, the huge display. Like, you're not going to miss which preset you're on. Yeah, the, sp the display is a really important part of this because we worked really hard to find a display that could handle stage lights without washing out mm -hmm. or the sun without washing out. And then it wasn't we, annoying and <laughs> yeah, exactly. and bright. Yeah, because sometimes they just disappear. And we've put everything also on a, on a Bluetooth app, so you can have it all ready to go. So it's a smaller format than we've done before, um, a lower pro profile even vertically. And uh, um, you know, if that wasn't small enough to take on the plane with you to your gig, well, call ahead, have them bring a TT1000 and your phone. Cool. Right, so some, let's do something gaining. <laughs> clean a little sloppy but it, you know it is a show <laughs> Go a little chunky with the fact. Sweet. So, Jeff, how much is the GT one thousand going for again? It's nine ninety nine, right? And it should be out in about three months. Cool. Before we go, um, you were going to tell us a little bit about this. It's a new Katana amp, right? Yes, I'm super excited about this. This is the Katana Air. Now, Katana's been out for about a year, and a lot of people know the user interface on it. It basically starts the same with the same five amp models, the same three-band EQ, and, of course, the three simultaneous effects. Internal, there are over 15 effects that are available from it. And uh, from a phone app, a Bluetooth phone app, you can actually add it and get over 50 effects. But what makes this thing truly unique is that this guy... Is it, it charges on top of the unit and gets your wireless transformer. The combination of this and this with battery operation makes it the first truly wireless amplifier. So just plug it in. Right? And there's a feature about this which I want to just mention, which I just love this, right? Um, because I can jam along with my Bluetooth tracks, right? I love that the kids can be listening to my, my Bluetooth audio player. And, um, you know, I'm sitting there, maybe something cool plays, right? And, well, if I leave this in my guitar, it's got 12 hours of battery life built into it. Um, when I, uh, if I stop playing, it'll fall asleep. So I just set it next to the couch next to me. As soon as I pick it up, it's got a motion se sensor in it, and it'll wake up. And now all of a sudden I'm jamming over my kids' songs and they're all annoyed with me and it's going to be fun, right? <laughs> Dad! Dad! Well, and it, since the other way it works is that this will also wake up the amplifier. So again, just leave it the, on the mantle, leave it on the shelf, like next to the TV, wherever you're going to put it, and pick up your guitar and play. So Sweet. it's super fun. So how much is the Katana Air going for? Three ninety nine. Cool. You want to tell people where they can go online to find out more about both these things and everything else Boss does? All right. Please join us at boss.info. Sweet. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Thanks for joining us, guys. Sean Hammond for PremierGuitar.com.